manicured and amenity rich, Sherman Oaks is a quiet LA suburb that allows for city convenience with small town peacefulness. It has all the comfort and convenience of an affluent LA suburb, clean streets, great shopping and multiple parks which make for easy living. This channel is all about living in Los Angeles, where I cover communities all over the city. If you're interested in learning more about LA, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Ange Coley Catalano, and I'm a realtor in Los Angeles with the Dinsky team. And today I'm taking a deeper look into the pros and cons of living in Sherman Oaks. Now, this is an update to one of my previous videos on this topic because things are changing all of the time. And of course, I want to show you all the new happenings and developments around the area. I'd say this video is for those of you that are looking to relocate here from another state or country, but also for those of you who may be looking to move to Sherman Oaks from other parts of LA. Perhaps you're expanding your family or looking for more space. And seeing as I have personal experience with both of those elements, and I moved here myself a few years ago, I really wanted to give you an insider's perspective. Now, if you look at Sherman Oaks, you can see that it's in the southern part of the San Fernando Valley. And you can see that the 405 and the 170 and the 101 freeways are right by it. And the 101 freeway drops right into Hollywood and the 405 takes you all the way to West LA. And you have these canyons that connect the San Fernando Valley to Beverly Hills and West Hollywood. So when you're thinking about moving out of the city and into the suburbs, Sherman Oaks is really up there as a hot pick because of its proximity to the city. So now we've established where it is, let's look at the pros and cons of Sherman Oaks. The first has to be that it's a great area for all demographics, from families, young adults, business professionals, as well as children and older people that want to retire. There's a really big mix of all types of people here and there's something for everyone. It's been rated as an A plus place on niche.com for ethnic and economic diversity. And a lot of people that have lived here have lived here for their whole lives. They went to elementary and middle school here, they got jobs nearby, and they raised their families here and retired. And that's because Sherman Oaks is quite central in terms of Los Angeles. You can get about to most places very easily. If you want to go to the city, it takes about 15 minutes over one of these canyons. The main shopping and commercial area, which runs through Sherman Oaks, is Ventura Boulevard. Now, this is an 18 mile stretch of independent mom and pop businesses, which is the longest actually in the United States and it goes all the way from Studio City to Calabasas. And in Sherman Oaks, Ventura is where you're going to find the majority of its nice restaurants, lunch spots, gyms, massage places, and you also have a decent selection of bars. Over the last few years, we have seen various businesses shut down since COVID and the landscape has changed. Now we are seeing several businesses from the city come and open up on Ventura Boulevard. Restaurants like Pizzana, Home State, Bakari, Casita are all fun, vibrant places to go and eat. And having these places nearby mean that you don't always need to go over the hill for a more fun night out. As well as new restaurants and gyms, we're seeing new supermarkets in Sherman Oaks. We've seen a very large pavilion and a Super Whole Foods, which both opened during the pandemic. We now actually have three Whole Foods in Sherman Oaks. So there's been some excitement amongst local residents, myself included, because there are less and less reasons to leave Sherman Oaks and because you can now go and get speciality groceries or a nice dinner without having to venture far. As well as the shopping on Ventura, you have two mall options. The Galleria, which mostly has some offices and a movie theatre and several restaurants. The Galleria is pretty close to the Encino border and the freeway, so at certain times of 
day, it can get really busy on Ventura close to the Galleria, especially during rush hour. And then you have the Westfield Mall, which is mostly clothing. You have Macy's, Bloomingdale's, Sephora and other mall favourites. The Fashion Square Mall is a great option for families that are looking to do less high-end shopping that you might find in malls such as the Beverly Centre or in Beverly Hills on Rodeo Drive. Now opposite the Fashion Square Mall on Riverside Drive we have a new development which is called the Citrus Commons. It was named after its historic occupant which was the Sunkist Company, whose brutalist landmark building is being brought back to life after several years. And surrounding it, developers are actually building 249 apartments and there's going to be 27,000 square feet of retail space, which is hopefully really going to help property values in this pocket. Now, it's yet to be confirmed who the tenants are going to be in the retail space in Citrus Commons, but what we do know is that there's going to be a speciality grocer. We are hearing rumours that it might be Trader Joe's, which might be moving from across the street. There are also several independent coffee shops other than Starbucks. There's a good selection of brunch spots like Blue Jam Cafe and Sweet Butter. Also, over recent years, cannabis laws have really been changing, so I've also seen about five or six CBD dispensaries popping up along Ventura Boulevard. So you no longer have to go to the city if you're dealing with chronic pain or you rely on CBD products. In terms of working out, there are numerous options for spinning, boxing, CrossFit, interval training. There's also the recreational center, which is the Sherman Oaks Van Nuys Park which is one of the area's largest parks. If you go there at around four or five on a weeknight, you're going to see a really busy park. And that's because there are soccer fields there. So there are children playing soccer, there's a running path, baseball fields, tennis courts, basketball courts, even a few pickleball courts. And it has a pretty recently refurbished outdoor swimming pool. For fun, Sherman Oaks also has mini golf, which is a really fun way to spend an afternoon. Now, in between Beverly Hills and Sherman Oaks, you have Franklin Canyon, which is a lovely little lake and canyon. And it's actually where I sometimes take my son to see the ducks and the turtles. You can hike on one of the numerous trails there. Another pro about Sherman Oaks, and perhaps one of the main reasons that people move to Sherman Oaks from other parts of LA, is the schools and that's because most of the schools here are really well rated lots of pro athletes and hollywood actors have gone through the school systems in sherman oaks whether it's a prestigious private school like the buckley or harvard westlake school where you'll find a lot of celebrity and industry parents or one of the great public schools the schools here are a really big draw for lots of people that are moving into the area as if you can get into a good school district you can avoid paying for private school. Some of the best public and charter schools in the area are Sherman Oaks Elementary School, Kester Elementary, Dixie Canyon and Millican Middle School. And the good news is that even if you aren't zoned for these schools there is a lottery system for quite a few of them so you can also try and pick a different school to the one that you were allocated moving on to the negatives the first negative that i'd like to talk about is that over the last few years it has become really quite expensive to live in sherman oaks and it is catching up with the expense of life over the hill and on the west side now being close to ventura in any capacity is obviously a lot more attractive because you can walk everywhere. Sherman Oaks has several subsections, but the main differentiation in price is whether you live south or north of the boulevard. The boulevard being Ventura Boulevard. South of Ventura tends to be a little bit more expensive. Those homes tend to be woodsy on Bendy Canyon streets in the hills above Beverly Hills and overlooking the Santa Monica Mountains. So many of them have views. A home south of the boulevard can cost you a few hundred thousand more than a house of the same size north of the boulevard. Now, that's not to say that all the nice houses in Sherman Oaks are south of the boulevard. Some people don't like being in the hills and north of Ventura, homes are on flatter land. If we look at the architecture in Sherman Oaks, 
a lot of the homes that were built here were built in the late 50s. So there are a lot of post-war ranch style homes and most of these tend to be around three bedroom houses. And there's also a significant amount of new construction box homes as well as modern styles that are being built which I guess is a second con to living here. The area is rapidly changing, and whilst that does mean lots of exciting new businesses, it's also somewhat annoying in the short term if you live next door to a house that's being flipped. I myself had this in my first year in Sherman Oaks, but now I love living next door to a nice looking house. And that my street is evolving, property prices have skyrocketed, so in retrospect it wasn't that bad but the few months that they were working and building here especially when they were framing out the house the noises were really annoying and it was definitely hard to make phone calls and be on zooms i guess it's something that you're probably just going to have to anticipate may happen at some point if you live in this area and it's probably going to annoy you for a few months in the hills you also see a fair amount of homes with nice long private driveways and that's why you do tend to find a lot of industry people and celebrities that live in the hills because these properties are much more private. Close to Ventura is where you're going to find a cluster of condos and apartment buildings and amenities such as gyms and outdoor barbecue areas. Price-wise, there is some diversity in Sherman Oaks. Homes range from around $1.4 million upwards. Now, I also want to talk to you about the part of Sherman Oaks between Burbank and Oxnard. This is a pocket that's called the Chandler Estates, and this actually used to be part of Van Nuys. But in 1991, the homeowners there petitioned to redraw the boundaries of Sherman Oaks from Magnolia to Burbank Boulevard to the north and from Coldwater Canyon to Van Nuys Boulevard to the west with the goal of including their neighborhood. This request was nothing new to the San Fernando Valley. Other neighbourhoods had either sought to change their names or sought to attach themselves onto more affluent neighbourhoods. And residents in this pocket argued that their pocket was originally part of Sherman Oaks, but it was labelled Van Nuys through the creation of the zip code system in 1962. A resident produced a property deed to strengthen their case and show that it was called Sherman Oaks, and they succeeded. So over the last few years, we've actually seen quite a lot of redevelopment and regeneration of homes in the Chandler Estates. In terms of the cost of living, Sherman Oaks is cheaper than areas like Beverly Hills, but in regards to the valley, it's actually one of the most expensive price points. And that's because of course the location and the proximity to the city, as well as all the amenities and the shops and everything that you have right here. So as we talked about previously, entry level now for a single family home is going to be around $1.4 million. If you live south of the boulevard, it is more expensive depending on the size of the home you have. However, if you want the cachet of owning a home south of the boulevard, we do need to talk about homeowners insurance, which could be higher. If your desired home is located in a fire zone and brush area, or a high risk wildfire area, then finding home insurance is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Non-renewals, cancellations, and rate increases are becoming a normal occurrence in California. For homes that are struggling to get coverage on the traditional market, many of which are in the hills and south of the boulevard, they still can get a policy with California Fair Plan. This was established so that all California property owners have access to basic fire insurance when otherwise access is not available through no fault of the property owner. California Fair Plan covers fire, wind, hail, malicious mischief, vandalism, and beyond that, you can get an additional DIC wrap or difference in conditions policy, which is commonly known as a wraparound, which would cover water damage, liability, falling objects, theft, and other perils that the fair plan doesn't cover. So if you fall in love with a home south of the boulevard, I would definitely recommend that you find out exactly how much it's gonna to cost to insure it before you complete on that purchase. Another negative to living in Sherman Oaks is going to be that at certain times of the day, it's really busy and there is traffic. Now that's good that a lot of people want to live in Sherman Oaks, um, but there are also a decent amount of businesses here, escrow offices, law offices, and 
several schools. There's also movie filming, which can be a hassle if they shut down your street for craft service trucks. So if you're planning to go out and it's early in the morning or rush hour, I would say build in at least an extra 10 minutes beyond what you think it's going to take you because you will get extra traffic along Ventura, especially on the way to the freeways. I would say the busiest part traffic wise is trying to get onto the 405 or even the 101 and because they're quite close to each other, that part of Sherman Oaks around the Galleria can get quite congested around rush hour. The next con that I want to discuss is the weather. Well, it's not really the weather. I mean, you move to LA for the weather, but it's what it brings. Most people move to the valley knowing that it's gonna be really warm and summers can get very hot. Sherman Oaks is cooler than other parts of the valley like Woodland Hills and Tarzana, but it's also at least seven to 10 degrees higher than the west side or the beach. So in the summer, you're gonna pretty much spend a lot of time in the pool or under a hose or inside in the air conditioning. So I'd say the negative part is to be prepared for bigger LADWP bills. They are known to get a little crazy in the summer. I've talked about this several times in other videos. And when I first moved to the Valley, I really got a shock from my LADWP bill. I moved from a two bedroom condo in West Hollywood where I was used to getting a hundred dollar bill every month. When I first moved to Sherman Oaks in the winter, I didn't notice it as much. My bills are around three or $400. And I just put that down to being the difference of moving from a two bedroom condo to a three bedroom house. But when it came to summer, my bills suddenly jumped up to around $700 a month. And I naturally freaked out and thought that there was something wrong. So I rang LADWP, was on hold for 45 minutes, which is obviously how they torture you so by the time you get a representative on the phone you're already so irate and they said no there's no mistake this is very standard for a home of your size and this bill is from an actual meter reading and then over the last few years I've gotten to know other people in the area and spoken to them and we've all commiserated that it's just something that you have to live with if you choose to live here. So definitely plan for a buffer in the summer as the weather can go up to 100 degrees and it is a different type of heat to other parts of the country because it's dry. You know, Los Angeles is the desert, so that's great news for us frizzy haired people that it's not like Florida and a sticky humid heat. But I am going to put weather in the cons category because in the summer it is hard to walk outside unless you go for an early morning walk or later in the afternoon. People do have to structure their workouts and their dog walks around the heat. If you are desperate to go out for a hike in the daytime, you really are going to have to head out to one of the canyons early, I'd say before 10am. Either that, or you can go to one of the many air-conditioned gyms in the area. The other option to escape the heat in the summer, if you don't have a pool, is the beach, which is about 25 or 30 minutes away, if you time it right. I hope you found this deep dive into Sherman Oaks useful. Please give me a shout if you have other topics you'd like me to cover. Thanks so much for watching.